Fox won a Champions League. We're going to see which team comes out on top, at least in this game. Yeah, and the crazy thing about EDG as well is this was from the very start of the split. This team looked unbelievable from the word go as well. So actually, they're looking a little bit shaky here towards the end. 5.7, not quite the EDG patch that maybe the 5.4s were towards the middle of the season. But we'll see how they go, because of course, it has been word on the street that they haven't got quite as much practice as EDG otherwise would have liked before the playoff finals of the LPL, but maybe leading in to MSI now, and we saw before against AHQ, a team that can take a game off Fnatic in pretty commanding fashion, looking pretty good. But let's get back into Champions League. <laughs> I was jumping out my shoes here. Callista was left up really, really quick locking here. First pick for SKT, and he can combo that still with enough Thresh already being masked over. Uh, even if Thresh is taken off the board, though, there are still plenty of other good uh, combos. Cannon also still available, but man, the pick's coming in very quick. They're taking away the Lulu from Faker very early on as well. And er, excuse me, Faker's well. not in the game. Just kidding, Faker's not in the game. <laughs> Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon, though, still a very good Lulu, but he can go right back onto Ziggs. I think that's what's next for him with the Cassiopeia and Azir removed from the table. Edward Gaming trying to drop off these team fight mages, but there's actually a lot left here. SK Telecom should be happy to just put Ziggs in the same place. I'm so surprised with the Gragas ban. You give away Kalista for that. You give you also give away Rek'Sai. You didn't take that in the first round. The, this, the early stages here, uh, as far as the team comp, Ooh. I'm feeling very good about SKT. Yeah, picking away the... Oh, well, I guess they didn't need to. Thresh was already locked in here. Koro, though, he might get his Nah. He's 14-1 and one on this champion this season. Koro's Nah is probably one of the best in the world. Marin definitely expecting the Nah pick here, as seeing as how SKT have not prioritized it at all. So you're saying that's a top lane Annie, kind of like <laughs> Looper thinks is the counter pick to Nah? I mean, it hasn't Don't worked yet so. in China, but no, it, hasn't. it <laughs> you know certainly what? hasn't. Well, also, Juana either way does get to come through for Clear Love, so he's not receiving many bans and he gets whatever he wants. And that's actually, I guess, yeah, they banned away the Gragas, but yeah, the Sichuani, a very big deal for Clear Love. Team fight power is here. I think we really expect that Lulu to go mid. It's just not Koro's style here. SK Telecom now to make their last few choices. And so far, it's the ability to engage fights very hard. And the question is, how much follow up is there? I still do want to see Zix myself. Yeah, I mean, EDG have locked in a lot of uh, safety here for themselves. Very beefy team so far. A good front line is exactly what you want against Annie. Try and make her engage that much more difficult. Have some big bodies to block her flash engage. But with Kalista, that's ridiculously hard. And SK Telecom actually going for a pretty squishy lineup here as well, wanting to go for a whole lot of damage. The double AP comp coming through, but so much persistent damage. And we saw Marin's Rumble. This guy is a god on that champion, and the area of effect damage is ridiculous, provided that Annie can get a stun down. I actually really like the double lock in here for SKT uh, for the double AP because uh, <clears throat> Vladimir can be a very, very hard to push out of lane. Uh, so Easy Hoon can be a very strong point there, just sustaining over and over. And Kalista brings so much pressure to the bottom lane that if you get a Rumble to level 6 and force something in bottom lane, which is almost guaranteed because you have Kalista Annie, yeah. uh, SKT can make those it's early Sana, moves, by the way. Can, can roll, well, <laughs> well then, can roll that into the early dragons and try and chain them. Interesting uh, Tristana here from Death, though. This is very strange. So SK Telecom, yeah, as you mentioned, low durability, incredibly high damage team composition. When fights start, they're going to end almost right away. Edward Gaming actually lacking very heavily in terms of team fight actual damage output. Tristana actually not a very high damage AD carry. Nar kind of mediocre. Lulu pretty low overall. But it's a bunch of really, really strong lanes for Edward Gaming and a lot of early push pressure available. Right. I feel like what they're going for here is to try and avoid the fights for the Dragon. And it's going to be hard, but try and avoid the Kalista Annie engage and go for turret pushing. Looks like EDG want to shove down outer turrets and trade objectives early on rather than fight the fight that SKT wants to take. Don't yeah. want to fight that Rumble early on. Don't want to fight the Callista Annie combo. So they're going to try and gain their gold uh, by trading objectives using the Tristana. Yeah. Very quickly push down turrets. Yeah, they need to get in and get out here as well because they cannot stand around for a fight because they've got Hemoplague and 
equalizer to just completely zone them out of everything. Right, and that's the problem, is that there's a little bit of a mismatch here in the jungle, and that Bangi does get the Rag'Sai. He does get an early aggressive champion, so that when you see Edward Gaming pushing in for all these fights, they can get caught. Yeah, that's exactly right. But it's time to head over to your Twitter and share your game predictions. Tweet the hashtag SKTWin or hashtag EDGWin to at LOL Esports, and we'll be checking shortly to see how you're calling this game. And man, I don't know what to expect from this one, because I, I don't know. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. Well, Tristana in the hands of Deft. True. Another thing to keep your eyes on, though, for this game is oftentimes Rek'Sai's dragon pressure is really underrated. Not only can she do it by herself if you leave that dragon unwarded, but also you can make cross map plays and answer you know, the strategy of trying to trade objectives and quickly shove because she has that global ultimate. And you can track anyone coming towards that Dragon Pit as well with the Tremor Sense. It's really, really strong there as Bengi going to get a ward destroyed by EDG. The five-man stack, and they're not stopping. Oh, Sentinel man. as well, more money. This is working out for EDG. 20 gold right away for Edward Gaming. They are definitely winning so far in the early oh, game. If only Koro had a Spell Thief's Edge, that would have been even more money. Oh, true. Oh, they kill another ward. That is three of them taken down. SKT, though, they're looking to set something up. EDG still very deep here. See where the SKT can go for the pincer move that they're potentially looking for. There is a ward in that brush, though. Annie has also started the W to charge up the stun. So SKT very ready for this early fight. And they're going to force. Ooh, they're going to chase him out. They're looking for it. Actually, Annie's waiting behind here. Is EDG going to get Marin? Just trying to flame through the flash into the stun here as well as the flame came through, but not going to quite <laughs> find too much. It right. is going to force bad recalls for Edward Gaming. Minions have already spawned, and Mako, I, I, I guess he can survive for now. He doesn't really need a health bar right now. And Clear Love got away without taking too much damage himself, so I think life is still good. However, Clear Love had to start Arctic Assault, so. The Q for Sejuani going to make it a bit of a slower jungle clear. He's going to require a pretty heavy leash. Yeah, it gets the leash, though, so it is probably going to be fine there. But it is going to mean that the lane swap is answered very easily by SKT. All right, so two-on-two -two matchup is the goal. Early teleport, Marin realizing he needs to get into that one-on-one -on -one right away. You should never waste any time when he realizes the one-on-one -on -one lane down there. And he goes to get a little bit of early experience and gold for himself. Yeah, it also means that, you know, both dual lanes showing up top really early on and sticking around for that fight. Oh. SKT do have the two versus two. Clear love, though. The level level wolf. two gank. Oh, level one the rocket, rocket jump. jump. Aggressive play. Beautiful play back here as well. Wolf going down so low. He's burning first blood for Deft as Bang trying to get some damage back. But a level one Callista. Careful, oh, careful. Oh, you can rocket jump back in. Another rocket jump gets a flash. Bang is going to be okay, though. Again, return to the flashless lane early on here with Sejuani. Clear love with the level two Sejuani gank. Able to capitalize, take How down the How many times have blood. you said that? Level two Sejuani gank. <laughs> this is the first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bangi, though, making his own way to the bottom side. Now, the only flash missing for Edward Gaming is that thrash. Mako's already recalled to get, like, a million and a half awards, so I think ganks from Bangi unlikely. He does, however, make the very smart choice of running to the bot lane, beelining it down there, and I don't know if Mako's going to check this to stop the blue buff steal. Yeah, it is coming through now as Marin oh. to push here on the bottom side. Mako is going to discover the blue buff being taken, and Bangi took a little while to try and get that one down, and he is going to protect it. Well, Bengi started on the very left-hand side of the map. Smart choice to try to steal the blue, but Mako there in time. So slow, though, and they waste so much more time. Not only did Clear Love get off the first gank, but he's ahead in levels as well, able to quickly get back into the jungle that was just protected for him and continue farming. Bengi behind on Rek'Sai right now. And, and Poro had oh, teleport. Wow. And Koro just is going to pick up he, that entire wave here as well. Oh, wow. Bengi just lost the last, like, almost two minutes of jungle time here. He's not going to be able to get this. The strong side invade here from Mako. EDG with a huge, uh, huge early game. Oh, he doesn't have... Doesn't yeah, have Bengi actually <laughs> going to pick that one up here as Marin's going to come through as well. Clear love trying to get the damage down, but Wolf coming through with a stun up. Easy Hoon flashes forward. Mako so incredibly low. Easy Hoon's going to pull on to death. Rocket jump going to be used. Dragon just going to get a bit upset at the EDG members. That is the first time I've seen a flash pull for CC. <laughs> that is epic from Easy Hoon. Clear Love did not have the smite for the quick 
steal away with that red. That was the changing factor there for Bangi. That was the lifesaver. Bangi, because he had waited so long, did have his smite back up. And a good collapse here from SKT. But the problem is, kill or not, Koro had already TP'd into the top lane, cleared a bunch of waves, and Marin only now is walking back up that lane. So a gigantic minion lead, level lead here for Koro in the top lane. An isolated matchup way up there with all this pressure down here. I don't expect jungle ganks. That's going to be a difficult matchup for Marin. Yeah, and EDG have already decided that they're going heavily investing in the, this early game. They've got double Dorans on three members of their team. Even Koro in the top lane there on Nair. Double Dorans, Blade. I don't care. I want to wreck this early game. It's all, you know, it makes sense, right? The builds make sense after the champion select. The laning phase of extreme importance for Edward Gaming. Yeah, so it doesn't, it's not quite as bad as it looked with that giant wave up there, be, just because Marin did get the last hit on the kill, so he at least got that money. So he is going to be at experience disadvantage for a bit longer, uh, but it's not quite as bad as level 5 okay. car, 33 CS versus that level fair. 3. Um, Rumble here, but yeah. that is a very swingy matchup. This is a very skill based Whoa. matchup uh, between Nar and Rumble, and just the smallest of leads is leads is going to be a, mean a big difference because Coral is going to be able to rush into that hex drinker very quickly now and be able to bully the lane back. But as you can see, EDG losing this two v two matchup yeah. super hard there on the bottom side of the map. Double the CS almost here for Bang. As Wolf, he just needs too much respect for that stun. There was too much damage possibility there. As Bengi looking to try and come in for something. <laughs> just wandering around here on the bottom side of the map. Whether, whether it's Lee Sin or Rek'Sai. All right, they found it. And the words keep coming back down. Edward Gaming get a little bit of time to farm back up, but it is a 13 minion deficit as the lane resets. Def definitely far back. Yeah, he's struggling here in this matchup so far. We'll see. They have got, they obviously had a plan. This is a last pick, Tristana. And we've seen it before. We've seen Tristana's picked up in response to Callista's. We haven't necessarily seen it be obviously successful in any particular way over in the LPL, but we'll see whether it is going to work out this time. So far, not going so well, though, as SKT just really, really strong. And the Callista is something that EDG have been known to ban away from everyone, and so far just haven't really decided to. The question is if they, if they respected things Callista enough, and so far they haven't. They're doing an amazing job continually in this lane, and the health bars are just so low that Thresh would normally want to play a little bit aggressive against Annie, tank the stun, and then go for a flay play, but that just can't happen here, so Edward Gaming can't even play the lane matchup the way they would want to. Meanwhile, though, Banky making an early move up top. Oh, he yeah, uses there's the flash. a flash knock up there as well. As there is the equalizer. So good at it is Marin, and Kara tries to bounce away. Ziv impression not working this time. The small little takeaway there for Koro is that his teleport's just about to come back off of cooldown. Uh, the thing is, though, that SKT already have the stronger bottom lane foothold, so that early dragon grouping that we prefaced could still very well be on the table for SKT, even though they burned Rumble Ultimate. Uh, Koro has to decide between walking back the lane and losing double minion waves and saving his teleport for it or using it back. So there it is. It's blown. And yeah, TP's back into that lane, of course. Does have a CS advantage here still. This is sort of what EDG have sacrificed. They've sacrificed the bottom lane to try and get Koro an advantage. It does make sense. Of course, Koro's not nah, fantastic. He did almost hard carry their last game on the Hecarim, but it is a different experience now. We'll see whether EDG can make this comp work. They're looking to make a play on the Dragon. Ooh, and it's right off the recall timing of Bang and Wolf, but spotted out by the Spectre. Seems like that's not going to happen. Every Gaming unable to really do much. They had a free lane off of this BF Sword recall, and all they will do is clear a wave, clear a couple of Sentinels, and overall, SK Telecom looking very good in this Battle of the Titans. Actually, they're also able to sneak in a recall for Easy Hoon here as well. So SKT uh, able to get the purchases very, very key purchases. Uh, Vladimir now at that extremely annoying sustain level in the mid lane. A couple more levels and he'll have the max transfusion with already the spell vamp. So Easy Hoon will become that immovable object in the mid lane. Yeah. He's so close to that Will of the Ancients there as well. So looking to be able to make a play. Of course, very even in the mid lane so far, but no action going to be happening. Of course, a Lulu lane, probably not exactly a high pressure solo kill lane. We saw a move. Clear love has been discovered in his jungle. Wanting to take advantage of the level six here. Uh, spike from Sejuani. Good by Very Bank. powerful in the two versus two. 
Uh, Rage bar charging up. There we go, Megan Arbar is almost there. Clearlove does have the ulti. Marin's not going to be able to dodge this. Puts the equalizer down, stunned to the wall. Bangi actually tanks the glacial uh, attack, but it's still going to be a kill picked up by Clearlove. Koro chased out by Bangi, but not enough damage from the Cinder Hulk Rek'Sai. Means a kill still comes through to Edward Gaming. Yeah, and Marin knew that was coming as well, but didn't react. He thought they could counter gank Trying it. Trying to get that counter gank, yeah. I don't think he respected the Gnar ultimate there. Really good job by Koro jumping in and grabbing it. Meanwhile, bottom lane though, left undetended, both with when both junglers show on the opposite side of the map. It's good. Oh, this is a very good yeah, hook, but the TP's already there. It's a nice buster shot here as well as Defty's going oh! to Marin comes through with a beautiful teleport. He ran back towards the lantern to try and grab it. He could have just walked back. Big misplay there. Amazing stun comes out from Wolf to make sure that he gets killed for it. Well played SKT. More advantages coming into the blue team. And that's exactly what I talk about when it's it pretty much a guaranteed engage when you have the Callista Annie bottom lane. It doesn't even matter if Rumper has his ultimate or not. Teleports right in. There's the exact fight we were talking about for bottom. That should translate into the early dragon for SKT. Check, check, check for early game. Yeah, and Bang's going to have the rend as well. Barely even needs to have smite as Bangy is Bang able to just to eat that one down. Bangy is going to secure it in the end though, and EDG. Nothing they can do. First dragon going down for SKT and... Oh, oh, over the wall. Oh, actually gets pulled over the wall there as well as Clearlove was tried to be pulled in, but the flash over from Wolf is going to save him. Definitely a bonus whenever you can blow the anti-flash though, uh, especially at this stage of the game, uh, before he's been able to even upgrade his boots close to getting distortion. Clearlove, meanwhile, able to continue clearing this jungle. Things calming down just a little bit. Going to be deft, trying to find farm where he can. Still 33 CS behind, but it was moving towards that 50 mark. It was looking very dangerous on this bottom side. And Def now wanting to sort something out, but it's Pickaxe Avarice Blade versus BF Sword Zerker's Greaves. That's just, that lane yeah. done. Go, I go back to the beginning of Champions Like so, I was so ridiculously surprised that EDG did not ban Callista. They always... Yeah, they, they normally do. They banned it away from him every single game of the final, and they won that one. Every gaming. It's like, you know what, Bang? If you're not Imp, we'll let you play it. <laughs> yeah. Ends up being the wrong choice so far. Maybe if they play SKT again, they won't do that. Maybe. But, of course... The lead continuing here for Bang in the bottom side. Koro does have an advantage here on the top, but this is Rumble. He doesn't mind. He's hit his mid-game power spike. Yeah, Bang probably not going to hit this turret at all and let it kill as many minions as possible. EDG have tried to leave the area where they know that they're at a guaranteed disadvantage. Never mind, he's just going to finish it off anyway and try and hard shove to the second turret to get that wave uh, all the way into the second turret. But EDG, they did a good job. They left the the bleeding, and they tried to move up to trade objectives like what we said we were looking for. And SKT's not being stopped as well. Bang and Wolf are still knocking these minions down. It's BF Sword, Zerker Greaves, and a Longsword on Callista. This turret still has no defense. Koro, I don't even think he'll get there before this turret falls. Yeah, Marin is actually doing the same thing on the bottom side of the map, though. His clear love's hanging around as well. EDG, they might be able to trade these inner turrets. And when you're behind, I mean, I guess if you're going to go even trade, it's actually working out for you. This is exactly what you have to do in League of Legends. As we said in Champion Select, when you Kill have cards. a disadvantage... <laughs> well, to kill Nexus, I guess. <laughs> but when you have a disadvantage on one side of the map, uh, try and cha trade objectives uh, rather than waiting around and watching and slowly losing that map control. So they're trying to get some global gold back on the other side, uh, but SKT... Uh, can continue to deep ward on that side and continue to chain those dragons, try and force EDG to walk through those jungle corridors where Marin can have the highest impact. If you go get stuck in one of those corridors for a second, the Callista Annie will make you stick there, the Vladimir Rumble combo will destroy your entire team. Yeah, and that's not good, having your entire team destroyed. No, it's really not. And, and SK Telecom, despite having this lower wave clear team. Maran used his ultimate, the equalizer, to clear one of those top lane waves. Top lane tier two was not killed by Edward Gaming. It ended up being a two for one turret trade overall. Bigger lead for SKT as this game goes on. Maran's ult just about back up. He's got the magic pen build there as well. Bang's coming to this side of the map to knock down more outer turrets. SKT playing the battering ram AD carry quite well. Yeah, and though we haven't really revisited Easy Hoon, 
this Vladimir, as I said, this immovable object constantly shoving waves so quickly, that's the reason that EDG could not rotate Pawn, their main wave clear, over to try and stop some of this hard pushing. Because there's so much pressure here in the mid lane, if you leave Easy Hoon around, uh, that he's constantly chipping down this mid turret. And I think Pawn is expecting a whole lot more action there in the mid lane as well. He's taken Cleanse, which is probably mainly for Tibbers, right? I mean, you can get rid of yeah. Hemo Plague, that's going to help a no. bit there, but... You wouldn't even remove that. It would remove the Tibbers. slow from Rumble, the, the Ren slow. No, no, I mean, that. kind of, like the last half second of it. Once Maybe. you're off of it, it has a duration, but... Yeah, it's, it's for the anti tier because he wants to make sure he doesn't get blown up by that. But no Ignite for kill pressure. There's only one Ignite even on the team against a Vladimir. And SKT able to use the battering ram to carry the knockdown top lane outer turret. So SKT, three turrets to one here. Playing this a is, very smart this is game. The, this is an AD carry that we've been hyping this entire time as being one of the best in the world. That's down 55 CS as a, a matchup that they chose as well. I mean, yeah. I mean, Callista's a first pick worthy AD carry. She's known for her laning phase specifically. Bang's a great player, arguably the best AD carry in Korea right now. And, you know, it worked. The Callista bullied the lane, and, yeah, you know, whether you're deft or not, you're facing Bang's Callista. Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, and he got, he, he got a very early kill at the same time. True. Got first blood still off. Yeah. Very confusing prospect here, but... See how it does work out as we move forward. Tides of Blood starting to do some work now on Pawn here in the mid lane. Yeah, the truly worrying thing is as well, uh, since Deft is so far behind, the attack damage threat for EDG is going to be really, really lacking. Uh, and just a little bit of magic resist picked up from SKT will, all, will be the only defensive stats they have to build. They can focus pretty much purely on offensive stats here and continue to snowball these uh, early dragon fights. And that's what this comp wants to do with Rumble Vladimir. Yep, it's just getting better and better for SK Telecom, of course, as Easy Hoon continues to scale up on Vladimir and Kalista staying a few thousand gold up ahead of an enemy AD carry. You're always going to be doing sort of multiplicatively more damage over time until you cap out, so... This slow growth is totally fine for SK Telecom. You just have to be very careful here. I think they bide their time, give away uh -oh. the next couple of dragons even. Well, yeah, there's the Tibbers. Koro does get Mega Nar, so he's a bit tanky. A nice dodge out of the way of the Fates Call there as he takes a land to safety. That is a flashless Mega Nar, and that is the most scared I've seen that monster be. Well, he should be. <laughs> yeah. Venturing too close to that territory around Dragon. SKT, you know they will be in position for this. And immediately picked up. But that being said, I mean, it's only close to 2,000 gold, the lead here for SKT. EDG have been known to give up Dragons. They don't really care that much about that objective, really. I mean, sure. of course, it still is a fantastic objective to have, but EDG have been known to win without it. But we'll see what they do. BF Sword now completed for Deft. So he at least has... A bit of damage. It's going to take a while for Tris to scale up, and this is not old yeah. Tristana. The hyper scaling really not a hallmark of Tris. It's for the turret kills, and so far EDG have found very few. SK Telecom, I think, still, they're happy to play a bit of a slower game. They're happy to play for that Dragon 5 and just continue to have wave control. Easy Huin is slowly knocking down this turret as the wards get better and better for the blue side. I mean, they're aware they're not. he's not going to die to clear love. Mid lane turret down to one third health just from one on one matchups so far. SKT getting farther and farther ahead over time. There's no burst damage from EDG. Vladimir thrives in this environment. Mm -hmm. Should be able to sustain himself against the tank line. Uh, definitely. Clearlove has had time to farm up his jungle, though. It's like a look back of old Clearlove here who just wants to be the agriculturalist, <laughs> cleaning up every bit of farm that's, possible. That's such an optimistic way of looking at it. Yeah, well, look, <laughs> 20 CS in the lead. These are jungle camps there as well, worth a little bit more. Uh, he's got more money than Bengi, so I mean, Nailed that's at least it. working for him. But yeah, right now, it's, just, it's SKT with map control. That's a very big deal for these guys. Bang. Uh, couldn't juggle really it. Really the only bl good blue buff user on this team. Support Annie, not one to cast a lot of spells except in a team fight, so I guess it's the right choice. <laughs> and look at this as well. He knows that there's double massive tanks on the side of EDG. He's not building the Hurricane by the looks of things. He's going for what could Shift arguably second. be a Shiv, yeah. Yeah, this is how Bang plays it. He actually maxes Q first on Callista. It gives him really good wave clear, even without having to go for a Hurricane, because he can actually just crush the backline. 
Still gets the AD stack because she's a bit of a caster and then into the more conventional AD carry auto attack build. Yeah, and it works for the tank busting as well. Yep, works just fine. He's going to be pretty happy. Callista also a nice love with Static Shiv because of all the movement. You, you stack it up faster. A lot of good things there. Plus, hey, the early magic resist uh, that we're expecting from Easy Hoon. He's finished his Abyssal Scepter. That's even going to help out with your Shiv damage a little. <laughs> <laughs> so does he play? play. Hey, it's it's more to the AoE hard. team. <laughs> He's got Lightning. They've got Fire from two different champions. Perfect. The power of blood. All right, Captain Planet. Bottom. Yeah, I was going to say, is this Captain Planet now? The equalizer in the bottom lane, though. Kara looking to try and turn it around, of course. Megadar, watch out, Mar. Yeah, there it is. Marin into the wall. Bengi's found his way in. Kara, he's going to get knocked up. Really wants to find the kill. The minions helping out just a little bit as Kara's just wandering around. There's the oh. ball, but doesn't get it as he gets burnt down by Marin. The Marin baits so far. The, yeah. first one yeah. go, the first one didn't go so well, but that one was perfectly played because there was no clear love around this time. Another two versus one here, able to take down Koro. Yeah, and, and it's that, like, go ahead, sorry. No, that just should mean that they can uh, move on this mid lane here. Uh, play attempt for the member dead. Of course, Teleport is still at Mako. Really wants this on Easy Hoon, but Easy Hoon still has all of the summoners. Flash comes in, in, the chain CC coming through. Ignite is on. Clear Love wants to finish off the kill, but Easy Hoon's going to ghost away. There's a stun from Timbers. The kill's not going to come through. That's another kill picked up. Oh, now oh, Dev oh. wants it. Knocks it back. Still can't get the kill. Easy Hoon picks up one for the team. Edward Gaming starting to get sloppy. Yeah, you don't yeah, know. He was so hungry for that reset, though. It was so close. Just didn't get it. If that was a crit. Because he just finished his Infinity Edge. Unfortunate. This is a team that's in a hole that's not supposed to take fights right now, uh, unless you have a severe numbers and positioning advantage. Welcome to advantage. China, Kirby. Welcome to China. <laughs> they, they were, they had inklings of, you know, rotating around the map, trying to trade objectives and grab gold uh, in exchange for other objectives. But that team fight win not only is it going to be the mid turret, but very easy Baron here for SKT. And that is heartbreaking for an EDG team that loves to go for those. All right, so here we go. Here's that initiation. So they were going to try and get this uh, three versus two. However, they did not have sufficient ward coverage. They've had no control of wards anywhere outside their own territory. Uh, and with SKT arriving for the defense here, pretty easy turnaround. Easy Hoon had both summoners available for this fight, able to keep his distance, and then goes in for the last transfusion. Burn won't get him either. Yeah. And this is what happens when you don't have any items in your AD carry, and of course the magic resist stack kind of killing off most of the spell damage that Death had as well. And Bang now with that shiv completed, Ooh. is it two items? There's a beautiful equalizer taking half of Mako's health pawn. Also falling low, Shilling Smite onto Mako, he's gonna die as Marin burns him down, and SKT just with so much control over this map. EDG, they can't enter their own jungle. EDG, or SKT just have a ridiculously strong mid game. And it doesn't look like they will give EDG the time that they need. Uh, with this Baron buff, let's see. Actually, Marn going to go back to base real quick. See if he teleports back out onto the field, because they have prime opportunity for pushing right now. Yeah, still 50 CS the lead here for Bang, though. So Deft, I guess, keeping it relatively similar to how it's been. But that's a difficult tale to make sound good. All right, so they're going to play it a little bit slow towards the mid game. They send Marin top, uh, and they're just going to try and take this dragon without having to commit their teleport. They're hoping that the vision advantage that they have and the gold advantage will be enough to take a 5 versus 4 dragon and Ooh. have that split pushing threat. But if EDG decide not to go to that area and head off Marin... No, this is good. They can jump on him. Glacial Prison uses going to be almost for sure a kill. And with four members still top lane, they can maybe get even more off this dragon is up. But SKT switch back to push down the mid lane and Edward Gaming half the play to SKT's tune. Yeah, Baron Buff is going to help them take this one down. This inner turret is going to fall. Only Deft sort of hanging around with Mako. So Koro trying to do some extra work here on the top side of the map. But EDG, they get a kill. That is definitely something. And you've got to pick up all the positive things you can when you're falling this far exactly. behind. Exactly. They're trying to make these trades. Even though they're so far behind and they have to take, you know, slightly unfavorable trades, they're going to get a kill and they're going to get that top turret in exchange instead of getting nothing while losing the dragon yep. and possibly losing their lives. Both teams lose a tier two turret, but it's a dragon pickup for SKT. Number three for them versus a kill picked up for Edward Gaming. Benki comes to the top side. Looks like he wants to push around Koro. Yeah, at least gets the ground for himself. Yeah, Kara is going to be fine. Does have that Randuin's completed here as well. He's going to go.
go back to base. And Bengi going to start off this blue buff. So he's going to reset just a little bit. But there are out of turrets to be taken. And Tristana takes turrets super fast. ADG just need to find a way to get to a turret. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult for them. I mean, uh, the exchange rate for EDG when you're behind <laughs> is very bad on these trades. <laughs> like they're stuck in the airport exactly. trying to turn in Korean won for US dollars, and it's just not happy for them. Now, unfortunately, the way the map is set up now, all the turrets that can be taken for Edward Gaming are on the bottom side of the map. Okay, there's a couple in mid, but it's that bot lands available. Problem is, Tristana doesn't have teleport, and Baron's the next objective up right now. Right, Dragon's gone for five minutes. Baron is actually easily killed by SKT overall. And if you send Trist to bot lane, that means Baron's probably killed, and that's another bad exchange right here. So in terms of things EDG can even look for, it's a tough road ahead. Yeah, I'm looking for Wolf to continue to control the vision leading up to the neutral objectives. Uh, because any time when the EDG finally have to do commit uh, and they step out to contest, that's where SKT can capitalize on that vision and blow that combo that we we're looking for with the Annie into Vladimir Rumble. Oh, yeah. In a Vladimir corridor. <laughs> yep. Tristana now does have two item power spikes. So that is a thing. We've got Locket of the Iron Solari completed against double AP, which is huge as well. EDG, they have hit sort of an item timing that they're probably okay with at this stage, but they're still so far behind. We'll just see what they can do to try and claw their way back in, or whether SKT is just going to roll over the top. And you can see, now pushing down this inner turret with impunity in the top side, and only Deft and Mako can't do much about this. Yeah, three people top lane, now four as Rek'Sai comes on up. Of course, global TPs from their jungler and their top lane means they can have those guys split push. The other ones go and knock real structures down. Turret number six for SK Telecom T1. Edward Gaming, just all their lanes pushed in. Even if they wanted to trade objectives, all they'd get would be two minion waves. And the only things that they have left to trade away are inhibitor turrets. Yep. You don't, yeah, you don't, don't want to trade those. Don't the exchange rate's too much for inhibitor turrets. Can't afford that. Thank you, though. Trying to take a Raptor here from Clearlove, who says, Come on, man. This is my jungle. Stop being mean. Oh, Clearlove wins the smite more. Maybe an omen of things to come. Don't try Baron <laughs> Bangi. It's too risky. Oh. Dangerous times. GG moving towards the top side of the map now as well. Clearlove already out there. Wants to be able to clear out some of this farm for himself, but... Seems like things have slowed down just a little bit as Koro's going to get a little bit, bit of aggression there on the bottom side, but nothing yeah. going to really come for it. Bengi looking for something. I don't know whether he wants to find it not. Yeah. Well, definitely does got the now. He was backing on a ward there as well as Wolf comes around, wants to find even more CC as Bengi. Ooh! Yeah, cute little hop over the Gromp as Bengi trying to come through. There's, in fact, the Fates call. They really want this kill as Koro. The Hex Triggers pop. Nice nah to stop Benji, Bengi from getting anything going, but is he going to be okay? There's a Lantern ignored again, and Mako just wants his team to take one of his Dark Passages. Like, please, someone. I I love how you could just see Bengi getting frustrated. He was waiting for the hop, and he was like, come on, hop, hop, then I'm gonna <laughs> jump, hop, then I'm gonna tunnel in. And he was like, oh, you know what, forget it, I'm going in. And finally, there goes the hop and the escape. But I think right now it's finally time for EDG. They kind of have to make a bush play. They need some surprise factor. Well, they can surprise factor top lane inhibitor turret. The entire other team is on the bot side of the map, so Baron's not even a problem. In comes the push on to Marin. He's got the equalizer, but it's not going to hit Deft. Oh, maybe a premature ult, and Marin's going to survive it. Oops. Oh, Explosive shot not quite doing enough damage. as Bengi and Easy here and looking for something. Preyseeker going to find clear love, but he's pretty tanky. Glacial Prison is down, so of course they do not want to turn. And what is with Edward Gaming 80 carries and underperforming at big international tournaments? Oh dear. It's not a curse these guys want to have, but so far, Def, honestly like... hailed as the best AD carry in the world. Not having a great game, it's just one that he's done poorly on, but still, it's, it's a player I think the team needed to, to like step up here. Don't take Tristana into Callista. Don't give them Callista. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, supposed then... to do something that it just hasn't done this game. We haven't worked out it yet. It got first blood, and then it just failed to push turrets around. Just I, I, I give. Oh, maybe I'm biased because I'm a jungler, but I give okay. the credit for first blood to Clear Love. Realizing <laughs> on that no flash and coming over. You mean like getting caught at level one and having so, no flash onto him? Yeah, credit. <laughs> credit where credit's due. Yep. I like it. I could almost argue that I'm good at League of Legends. <laughs> credit for being out of position. This is cool. You're welcome, man. <laughs> Fine. I've all planned out. Finally, we have some neutral objectives here. The Scuttle Crab. <laughs> That's, the That's the one. That's the one. 
All right. Oh, dear. So here goes the vision battle. In preparation for that bait in for SKT. Let's see how long they will fight the vision war before they can actually collapse. Big wave bottom, you'll notice. Uh, SKT have prepped oh, this wow. fight. Uh, it's about oh, to crash oh. into that inhibitor right now. Or Pings now what? finally go down for EDG. They, they realize it. Well, they needed him to get ward control back. SKT, as soon as they realize that this NAR has left, go right back in to get the wards back. SKT, again, not risking a 5v5 in open field, but a 5v4 they're happy with. Clear love down to half HP already. They're going to get into the fight. Out goes the Lantern. Yep, Lantern going to take him to safety, but that's a half-health jungler here in SKT. They could just get straight on the Baron. It's, in fact, already being started. Bang doesn't want to waste any time here. Let's get knocked up super high into the air, but the Baron has a whole lot of arrows in it. All they right. are going to peel off because EDG have found their way around. Clearly, I've decided he didn't want to back. Half he health can. is enough. Oh, Myron actually looking to take something through. Oh my goodness, Pawn somehow surviving that, but not for long here as Bangs found him. There's Koro looking for something. Does get the stun against the wall, but instantly QSS as Mako looking to try and catch on to Bangy, but he's not even sure whether he wants to do that one as EDG are just melting. Bang wants to find a way back into the team fight. Deft at half health. Koro, you are most definitely dead. And Deft forced to use the rocket jump very defensively. Clear love surviving here for now, but that is three kills as EDG were trying to escape that whole time. Impressive victory there for SKT. And that will be at least one inhibitor. See if they can actually retreat and grab a neutral objective after this. There's 10 seconds on most of the respawns. Teleport is 20 seconds on, uh, on death timer as well. They don't quite, they quite, instead, they don't quite decide to go for that Baron. Uh, but this is fourth but dragon here as well. This is putting a timer on EDG. The fifth dragon so incredibly strong. But it puts an interesting timer on SKT as well. They're still rather low, and the big ultis for the team fight are down. Edward Gaming honestly have room to make a really risky Baron play. I don't think it would quite work, but SKT let the guys respawn, stay at low health. Now are forced to recall. Edward Gaming gets about 30 seconds to get a bit of map control I, back. I and think maybe Trap. I think up. the time is actually gone now. Uh, EDG is so split up right now. All SKT have to do is return to the Baron and again play the exact same vision game. Yeah. Only this time they have got super minions marching up mid, so it's much, much easier. Yeah, the pink wards didn't even get cleared. There's still that pink on the Baron itself. No one from Edward Gaming was able to go down and get rid of it. <laughs> Of still having a bit of fun here, but that's a Ravenous death cap here on Marin as well. He's got a Zonia's. He doesn't yeah, have massive. the Leandris completed just yet, but he's got all the flat penetration. This is a terrifying rumble. He does some serious damage. Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be absolutely brutal. SK Telecom can cut through all the magic resist one more time. SKT tries again. Come fight us at Baron. Trust me, it's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. The ultis are all <laughs> back up for SKT. Edward Gaming, in comes the teleport. They're gonna have to try to stop this one. 5,000 health on the Baron. Koro jumps over the wall to get away, so Hop will be down for a few more seconds. He has no rage here on this Naba here as well, but SKT not going to be able to start up too much of this fight. They don't have a whole lot of engage apart from Wolf. So the fact that he was trying to take down a ward meant that they weren't really able to do too much, but EDG's in a good spot. They can clear the mid lane away, but of course, Marin is still pushing the bot lane in with teleport up. Right, they were able to draw out the cooldown they were looking for with that Baron attempt. And so now they've got complete pressure on bottom lane, and nobody can go answer without recalling. So SKT keeping up the pressure in the mid lane. Blink yeah, coming in from Marin as well. well. Beautiful ultimate from Clear Love. Look at the equalizer in the backside, though, on top of the Hemo Plague as well. This is what this comp's supposed to do. Oh, Melting. wow. And SKT's doing triple kill for Easy Hoon. And SKT, they can win the game. That was stunning. Zonia's in pool, SKT is walking forward, surrender vote comes out, 33 minutes, 33 seconds, SK Telecom T1, 2-0 on the day so far. That was just such beautiful play, and EDG, they just looked like they had no idea what to do against that comp at all from the word go, apart from sort of first blood, and then, oh wait, what do we do now? I mean, a smart early move, got the first blood. They tried to get out of that matchup. They tried to get lane swap situations so that Nar could more or less hold on to a 1v2 and Tristana could go knock turrets down. But SK Telecom T1 kept finding the matchup. They used the Callista Annie to completely brutalize that fortress on a thresh lane and Deft never got off the ground, even though he learned rocket jump at level one. At the pro level, there's just so much pressure that comes from a Callista Annie lane. Yeah. Ridiculously hard to work around. It just, it makes you have to make these really, really difficult choices.
Yeah, and the Tristana just didn't seem to do what it was supposed to do theoretically, that I'm still not entirely sure what that was. And I think it was supposed to be for a lane swap, and it yeah. didn't happen. You saw how hard these teams tried to match that, and I thought there were elements that were so good for EDG. Oh, Marin's TP is down, and they can swap the lanes early because there's so much push power on Tristana with explosive shot. Oh, this could be so good. And yet SKT, they took the licks. Okay, Marin, you lost a wave and a half. So what? These matchups are important. Props to Marin for doing well with the CS and a half a level disadvantage. And SKT just played the laning phase over and over and over again and accrued advantages. Yeah, they just played it beautifully. And of course, EDG, not a whole lot they could do. Yeah, bad matchups overall. Ever Gaming looking for a lot of push power. Couldn't do it. Great team fights overall by SKT. Yeah, but now we're going to hand it over to our panel of experts to break down that game.